children are little people. They can think, they can feel, they can sense, and they know. Secondly, don't let our friends in the church get in the way of reaching out to somebody who just got the Holy Ghost. Don't let our church be the kind of church you can't hardly break into because people are so busy, uh, amen, uh, uh, befriending each other and caring about each other that nobody notices the brand new guy or girl that's trying to become a part of the church uh, because if they associate this experience with the church really doesn't care about me, they're going to go right back into the cauldron of sin from which God has delivered them and we can't let that happen. <laughs> Souls matter. Souls matter today as much as they've ever mattered, maybe more, because the time is so short. So dissociation happens. There's healthy dissociation. Let me tell you, brother, something. When your wife sends you to the grocery store with a list and you think you're going to make a phone call while you're over there, I warn you, you already forget too much stuff when you go. And if you talk to a buddy on the phone while you're supposedly picking up a few things on the list, you're going to forget something. And it's going to happen again. Our wives already half don't trust us when we go to the grocery store. Because we mess up. Do you know what multitasking is? What it really is? Dividing your attention between several things. There's no way you can do five things at the same degree of efficiency as you could do one of them all by itself. That's dissociation. How many have ever been driving down the road and all of a sudden you find yourself at the place you were supposed to go but you don't remember getting there? Before you holler out miracle. You probably went into kind of like a psychic funk. And you were on autopilot. And you know the road so well that your subconscious got you there. That's healthy dissociation. It happens to everybody. But victims of abuse, they get into the dangerous type of dissociation. Whenever somebody is abused repeatedly, their personhood can split until they have this experience of being more than one. They say it's sort of like having your conscious self sort of floating somewhere above your physical self. And so it just kind of observes the abusive action, the pain and the hurt. And that's how it learns to cope with not being treated well. And so I want to say this, that the, the foothold of demon possession and Holy Spirit outpouring have some very common core precedents that I want to share with you. You see, when a person is in a state of dissociation, they're vulnerable to one of two things. Becoming demon-possessed or becoming filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me elaborate. Are you with me? What is amazing is Paul had an experience and he told the Corinthians for 14 years he kept it to himself till finally he says, I knew a man. Do you see this mechanism going on here? He speaks of his experience as though it had happened to somebody else. Some things are so awesome. That it's hard to process what's actually going on when it's going on. I remember after I got baptized in Jesus' name, 
I got baptized in Jesus' name on the first time I ever came to a Pentecostal service. Repented of my sins. Went down in the water. And there was a separation experience that happened to me. I felt my sins literally being taken off of my shoulders. Amen. And I literally came up out of that water a different man than I was when I went down into that water. Amen. Uh huh. And the pastor asked me to say something. And I, he put the microphone up to my mouth and I said these words I'm spaced out, man. <laughs> now, this is the former rock and rolling, hippified. Party animal. Let me show you the difference or the similarities between PCP and the UPC. <laughs> when I was 16 years old, somebody gave me something they called PCP. I think it was some kind of a horse tranquilizer. And in the name of fun, I took a horse tranquilizer. And the cops raided the party. And I was in a lazy boy recliner, tranquilizing. You know, you can hardly get out of a lazy boy recliner when you're well. And when the cops came through the front door, everybody scattered, except for me. I was like Santa Claus. I remember the policemen, two of them saying, get up out of that chair. And I went, huh? And I don't remember the trip. All I remember was one minute I was in a lazy boy and the next minute I was in the back seat of the patrol car. And I didn't care. But I had a brother who was hiding in the bushes. My brother wasn't going to let them drive me off just like that. My wife knows my brother. My kids know my brother. He's a quiet guy. He don't say very much all night. He just sits in his chair and everybody does things for him. And when he opens his mouth, he says things. He's my older brother. He says things like, that's stupid. Then he quiets back down for another 30 minutes. That's who he is. But not that night. All of a sudden, in the field of my vision, there was my brother pleading with the police officer. He's just a kid. I'll take him home. It's all my fault. He'll never do this again. If you'll just let him come with me, I'll take him home. He risked his own, his own uh, self. And I don't know, I don't know, I can't remember the conversation. I can't remember much of anything. Once I was getting in, then I'm getting back out again. <laughs> I was disassociated from reality. That is how people use drugs and they end up demon possessed. That is how people get into gang violence and they end up demon possessed. That's how people get into alcohol and witchcraft and seances and they become more than themselves, separate from themselves and they become demon possessed. But I told you of the similarity between the PCP and the UPC. Here it is. When I finally got under conviction and I went to a church. And they had an altar call and they said, come down here and accept the Lord as your personal Savior. I did exactly what they told me to do. Then I stood there waiting for something to happen. And nothing happened. And after it was over, they said, well, now you're saved. But nothing happened. I said, I needed something to happen. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. 
Don't you see? That's what the human soul is craving for. It's craving for an out-of-body experience of some kind. I found me a Pentecostal church. I prayed in that altar, and guess what? It happened. I began to speak with other tongues. I became a new creature. There was a new man walking in my shoes. Everything felt different. Everything looked different. Everything was different. And I've been living in two worlds ever since. Praise God. Come on, put your hands together. What your soul is craving for is an experience with Jesus Christ that's otherworldly. And if you haven't yet been filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance, you won't know whether you're in the body or out of the body. Whether you're sitting down, standing up, or laying down flat. But all you'll know is this. Sometimes we got to carry them into the car. This is the rest wherein the weary shall rest. And this is the refreshing. With stammering lips and another tongue. He's going to make you another man, another woman, another young person. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. And so, Paul says, I don't know whether I was on earth. I don't know if I was dead or alive. But I know this. I had a heavenly experience. Now, Isaiah, he has... Notice that elder brother and the prodigal son both have the same environment, but they have two different outcomes in their spirits. When the prodigal son comes home, it's a celebration time. But for the elder brother... The celebrating over the prodigal's return is a form of pain and a source of anger. Do you see what we're talking about? One gets beside himself in joy. The other gets beside himself in anger and reproaching his brother. Same environment, same farm, same house, same daddy, different effect. It could be that Isaiah made the mistake in the beginning of fearing that because something bad happened to Uzziah in that temple, that something bad was going to happen to Isaiah in this temple. Let me say this. Never make the mistake of allowing somebody else's negative experience in the church rub off on you as long as you live there's going to be somebody who says they weren't done right there's going to be somebody who says they were hurt there's going to be somebody who wants to fix the blame for their own lack of good conduct on someone or something or the entire church. But just because it happened to Uzziah doesn't mean it has to happen to me. So what I'm preaching today is this. What you think is your undoing may be your redoing. And all you really need is something from off the altar. When the angel took a coal from heaven's altar and touched Isaiah with the fire. You come in here cold and it's to be a source of worry and a source of negativity. But you get touched with the fire of the power of the Holy Ghost. And it won't matter how many others give up or backslide or quit. You're going to live for God. Come on somebody, praise him. So, you may not be coming undone at all. Huh? 
I've watched some people just can't wait for church to be over. Saints can't wait for church to be over because they want to eat. People who have no intention on repentance can't wait for church to get over because they want their conscience to stop. But walking out of the church isn't going to stop a conscience once it gets going. It's like a freight train. It won't leave you alone. You might as well pray through today. Isaiah got a revelation. I don't have to fail. We're people better than me, stronger than me, smarter than me, and richer than me failed. Mm -mm. Just because Uzziah messed up doesn't mean I'm going to mess up. Let me, let me just... So you're either going to have a breakthrough or a breakdown. What's <laughs> Author Susan Spencer Ward recently wrote a book to which she got millions of dollars and movie rights. The title of the book is Until I Say Goodbye as the musicians come. It took her three months to type the book on her iPhone using only her right thumb because that was the only bodily appendage that still worked. Having been told a couple of years ago that she tested positive for Lou Gehrig syndrome, this 40-year-old mother of two and wife said that this last Christmas was probably the last one that she would ever enjoy with her family. So with one contorted, disobedient, impaired thumb, she punched out an entire book. And she wanted to leave that book as her legacy. Lou Gehrig's disease is a paralyzing disease. It starts with your, long, your outer extremities, but it eventually gets to the organs till you can't breathe and you die. And she said, she wrote the book as a legacy to leave to the world, and I quote, to make people laugh, cry, hug their children, joke with their friends, and to dwell on how wonderful it is to be alive. The dying mother with every reason of the, in the world to allow this negative, bitter rip-off of a disease to make her angry, decided, I can either get bitter or I can get better. And since I have a choice of how I'm going to react, to my situation, I choose to use my dying strength to become a source of strength to others so that long after I'm gone, people who have lost hope can read the pages of my book and can laugh and chuckle and smile and thank God that they're alive. She refused to come undone. God wants to turn our woe is me moment into an oh it's he moment. Praise God.
God wants to take you out of the center of the canvas and get us to focus on the king that sits on the throne and the glory that fills his house and the promises that utter from his lips and the hopes that come through his decrees. I'm here to preach to somebody. You thought your life is falling apart. It's not falling apart. By the help and grace of Jesus, it's just now beginning to come together. I want us to stand and lift our hands. I want us to stand and open our hearts. I want us to give the Lord a praise right now. God's bringing your life together. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.